Welcome back to Pray TV. I am so grateful to be here with you this very day as we head into what is commonly in the Christian calendar called Holy Week, a time where we set apart our hearts in a very special way to prepare our souls to be able to really enter into the time before Jesus was crucified, when he was crucified, when he was laid in the tomb, and ultimately when he was resurrected on the Sunday. So I'm going to invite Charlotte, if you would just kind of uh, welcome our folk and bring us into this new week as God is preparing our hearts for something very special that he alone can do in our souls. Thank you, dear. We're so glad you're with us today and that we have the, the joy of celebrating this Holy Week together. We just look forward to what God has in store for us and our hearts are just filled with gratitude today for what Jesus has done for us. It's just his amazing love and we just thank God for the whole time of just this Passover that we've just celebrated and coming through Good Friday, next Friday, and then looking towards Easter Sunday. These are very special days that we want to be able to have a, an intimacy with the Lord in. I, I'm going to pray that God will somehow do something very special for each of us, for Charlotte and myself, but also for each and every one of you, so that you might be able to experience something very fresh, something very new, something of the anointing of God's Spirit that you're going to need. We always need Christ. We always need the Lord, but we don't always recognize that we need him. And so it's really a matter of having our eyes opened to who he truly is. And we're going to read a portion of scripture that's from John chapter 1, and we're looking at verses 29 through 34 in the New International Version of the Bible. But this was for John, John the Baptist, a eye-opening experience for him to be able to see Jesus. And he knew Jesus. Jesus was a cousin, but he didn't know him in the way that God had anointed Jesus to be. And it took this revelation that happened when John baptized Jesus in water and the Holy Spirit just descended on him, descended and remained according to what John said. Let's read this portion and then I'm going to ask Charlotte to bring a few reflections for us to think about. And this again is from John 1, 29 through 34 in the New International Version of the Bible. It says, the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him, and I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. Charlotte, would you just share with us a little bit some of the thoughts that God's put into your heart and into your spirit concerning this? Thank you, dear. I was thinking what a momentous occasion this was in the life of John the Baptist. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of God is at hand, and asking that the people of Israel repent 
and be baptized. And he knew that he was to herald the coming of the Messiah. But I don't think he knew till this moment in time, Brant, that his own cousin Jesus would be that Messiah. And when you think about it too, for John, he was from a priestly lineage. His father was Zachariah. He had had a miraculous uh, prophetic birth. And when he announced that, behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. What an amazing prophetic statement that was, because for John, you remember, he would be used to seeing the, the animal sacrifices in the temple that his own father was offering up. He would be very familiar about the lamb, the male lamb that would be chosen without blemish to atone for sin. But it was all within the Jewish context. And so for him to look at Jesus and say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, the all-encompassing love of God. Jesus, the Lamb of God that would require no more, no more animal sacrifices because he was the perfect Lamb of God without sin, without blemish, came willingly to die and to atone for our sin. And this is what we celebrate today, the gift, the amazing gift that Jesus has given to us, the forgiveness of sin, the assurance of a relationship and intimacy with him, the ability to come into his presence, to access his very presence in prayer today and to draw close to him. You know, God is wanting us to be able to see Him with that same kind of revelation that John the Baptist was able to see Jesus in. His eyes were really opened on that day. Our eyes can be opened again. And I am praying that God will really cause an arresting of our hearts, each and every one of us, in a new way, in a fresh way, in a deep and personal way. Allow the Spirit of God to breathe into your being in this moment. Allow Him to make you to come alive in a deeper, more profound sense than ever before. Reading this again from John chapter 1, verses 29 through 34 in the New International Version, it says, The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him. But the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. I'm going to ask you, Charlotte, if you would just begin our time of prayer, my dear. Thank you. Jesus, we thank you that you are truly the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus, you don't just cover up our sin. You take it away. You cleanse it. You forgive us, Lord, of all of our sins. And you give us your righteousness. You clothe us in your righteousness, just as though we had never sinned. Lord, there is no other message 
of hope and reconciliation with God our Father, but through you and what you have done for us, Lord. And Father, we thank you even for the prophetic revelation in John the Baptist that Jesus was the Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world, the whole entire world, and that we were included, Lord, in your sacrifice. And where hearts are full today, Lord, of praise for you, of love for you, that you have, Lord, covered us with this kind of mercy and grace is beyond us, Lord. And we thank you from the depths of our heart. And Lord, as we go through this Holy Week together, Father, we just pray that you would just help us to consecrate these moments and moments in our personal prayer lives to you, Lord, that we would just appreciate afresh, Lord, what you have done for us and who you are. In Jesus' name. And Father, even as your word says, I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. Lord, you are God's chosen one. You, in fact, indeed, are the one who was chosen from the foundations of the earth before time began. You and the Holy Spirit and God the Father, the triune God, had this community of one being in three expressions, in three persons. And you designed a way for mankind to be able to be brought into existence. You knew that we would fall, but you also made provision for us to be able to get up and to arise from the broken condition of our own souls and from our own lives. And so, Lord, we just thank you. This is not a sad week. It is not a time of mourning. This is a time of rejoicing. This is a time of praise to your name. And we ask, Lord, that you would fill us with a supernatural impartation of joy unspeakable and full of glory because you have triumphed. You have won the victory. You have made a way of escape from all of the bondages of our brokenness. And you are setting us free, transforming us, changing us from glory to glory into the glorious image of your Son. So we bear your image in the earth. Father, I pray that this day, every man, woman, and child who is praying these prayers with us would be able to find a wonderful sense of impartation from you. Lord, even as John saw the Spirit come down upon you and remain, Father, we ask that your Spirit will come upon each and every person and remain, remain on us, fill us full to overflowing. In all of this week and every other week of our lives, we praise you for that all in Jesus' precious and holy name. May God bless you as you continue this week. Consecrate this week to him in a very particular way. And let God take you into a whole new sense of well-being. <laughs>